Hi guys, welcome back to Commonwealth Revolution. I am Scott and this is Nacho Cast. In our last episode, we were on our way back to Sanctuary and we have stopped off here at Oberlin Station to check out some of the progress that they've made. I should note that I have disabled the True Grass mod as we transition into winter months. Okay, let's take a look around. We've built up the ground using the Grounded and Craggles mods that I introduced in Episode 2. I just wanted to get everything up above the weeds that are unscrappable. And as you can see, we have rebuilt the station into a guard tower slash warehouse. You can tell by the height of the workbench that we've raised the ground about two feet or so and there's still some weeds popping through the foundation. We may put some stairs in to raise the warehouse area a few more feet, just to get rid of those. Let's head up to the guard tower real quick and check that out. There's a simple room here on the second floor so that guards can take turns sleeping in shifts. That way someone's always on duty. Huh? Now check this guy out. This is a brand new armor from German Cancio called NCR Renegade Armor. What I love about it is that the eyes glow red. But there's no hands, the tactical vest doesn't show up on females, and the N99 10mm pistol doesn't line up properly with the holster. That being said, to get the full outfit, you need to download the N99 and classic holstered weapons. Which I endorse 100%. A lot of the holster mods only work on vanilla guns. But this one seems to work with all of my downloaded weapons as well. Hooray! Let's take a look at the overall build area that we're working with here at Oberlin Station. I want to say that this is about 20 times the size of the vanilla build area, which, as you know, is thanks to Build High. I should mention that Build High includes the Settlement Limits Slashed mod. However, for some reason, it doesn't work here at Oberlin. So you got to do the old Settlement Limit glitch which is only slightly inconvenient. I mean, it, it, it seems to work great at all the other locations. But check this out. This is normally one of the smallest settlements in the game. And now it's ginormous. Let's head down to the river. This is ultimately going to be a fishing community as well as a train depot once we get the railways up and running again. That's the hotel and restaurant there on the right. And there are currently three cabins here on the left. We've got a fish farm here, courtesy of G2M. I don't think I've mentioned that mod before, but it's great for the weird little obscure things that the general mods like Homemaker and Snappy and SOE don't bring to the table. G2M does. And speaking of G2M, the entire pier is built using assets from G2M and Craggles. Let's take a look at the cabins real quick. They're pretty simple. This wood stove is super cool though. Um, it's from Woody's Wasteland and I love it. I think it's a great addition, especially to a, a simple settlement like this, a little fishing settlement.
there's a place for settlers to wash their clothes here. And a little homebrew setup from Brewery Shenanigans. Now check this out guys, I really like this Myrler broiler, courtesy of Settler Work Time Immersion. We've got a couple of rowboats over meh. Let's head inside and check out the bar. This is another super cool wood stove, but I apologize, I can't find what mod it came from. Currently, this is the only bathroom they have, but these custom fixtures are from Creative Clutter by Crayon Kit. Um, you can only find those on Bethesda.net. Farm's not much, but it's something. Yep, our bartender is a pastor, so you can confess all your sins while you're sitting there getting wasted, which is when most of us do. A lot of the clutter that you see is from realistic bar items, which I also found on Bethesda.net. Yes? Mm, no. There's the current record holder for the largest miler claw above the fireplace. Let's head upstairs. These rooms are for rent by travelers. As you can see, there's a lot of potential here for a pretty cool fishing village. I mean, just look at all this. It's awesome. Okay guys, we're going to stop by Grey Garden next. Let's head out. Those big ugly bastards should hit us hard. Hello, sir. Hey, General. Hello, sir. General. I really enjoy seeing the Minutemen out there and about. It makes me feel like I'm not alone in this. First thing you're going to notice here at Grey Garden is all the new plants. These are olive trees. We've got green and red peppers. You'll also notice that the broken glass and the misters have been replaced. 
thanks to the warehouse extension kit. We also have garlic and onions made possible. All of these new plants are made possible from the mod Commonwealth Pizza. Let's head out back. Looks like they're not quite done building the Brahmin pen, which we need for milk and in turn cheese. Now this settlement is run entirely by robots, however we do need a few beds for security and the provisioner. So we've built four of those along with a bathroom. Let's check out the guard tower real quick. Down here is going to be our root cellar. This is for long term storage complete with air conditioning to keep everything refrigerated. Now the air ducts and all the cinder block walls are from the warehouse extension kit. I can't tell you how much I love that mod. Let's head down to the bowels of the building where our workbenches and our water supply control room are. And we'll end the walkthrough by checking out the overpass. This lift is from Finch Farm and Grey Garden Overpass Lifts, which I found on Bethesda.net. Now it's my understanding the settlers won't come up here, so I'm not going to build a market or any place that is going to need people, but up this high might be a great place for a solar farm. Maybe use the lower deck for power storage from the solar panels on the top deck.
I still built a fire escape, but I really like the lifts. Thank you, Trotsky. Let's head back down. You know, you know what? Let's head back up. I want to give you guys an overview of the settlement and the area that we have to build. So, there's still a lot of work to do here. The train tracks are a disaster. We're going to need to completely rebuild those, and that is going to be a huge undertaking. Regardless, this episode was going to include a walkthrough of Starlight and Sanctuary. However, it turned into like a 45 minute long video, and YouTube's algorithms don't like that. But the algorithms absolutely love your likes and subscriptions, so please do that for me. In the next episode, which is ready to drop, we'll be stopping by Starlight to see their progress, and then on to Sanctuary to have a look at the new bridge, which is a hydroelectric plant. Not gonna lie, it's pretty freaking epic. I'm super excited to show it to you guys. Please comment with any questions or suggestions, any build ideas or mods that you think I should check out. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace!